Want to learn to sweep pick or need to improve your sweep picking? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how. So stay tuned. Hey there, James here and welcome to episode 4 of the Ask James Guitar Show and today it's all about sweet picking. Had a ton of requests recently for some sweet picking, uh, less, a sweet picking lesson, people saying how can I speed it up, how can I sync my hands together, all this kind of stuff. So we're going to be looking at all of that in today's show. Now a couple of things about the lesson today. First of all, we're going to be focusing on three string sweeps. So these are sweeps which are going across three strings on the guitar like this. Now you can go across more string and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to focus on the three string sweeps because I believe that if you master the basics in the three string sweeping technique, the rest of it is a lot easier because you're pretty much doing the same thing. So this is a really great place to start. So apologies to all you people who are great at three string sweeps. We will be building on this in some future episodes. You'll still get something out of today's lesson. Um, but I'm sure if you work on your three string sweeps and really improve those, you'll notice a, a sort of improvement in all other aspects of your sweep picking too. So stay tuned because you're going to get something useful out of this as well. The other thing about sweep picking, remember it's just another technique. Don't get too hung up on it. Um, don't judge your entire playing by how good your sweet picking is. And also remember, it's just a way to decorate your playing. It's one technique out of all the things you can do. I've met people who could do great sweet picking, but their bends are out of tune and this, the tone they got out of their vibrato was awful. So don't be one of those guys, girls. Get, um, you know, remember, get the foundation of your playing good, your bending, your vibrato, the sense of melody in your playing, and then see how you can incorporate this technique into your playing. Let's um, have a look at a couple of the things to do with sweep picking and a few of the problems I've seen people come across with it and I've come across with it and see if I can help you out with some of these problems if you're having them. So first of all the sweep picking action. Now for those of you who don't really know what sweep picking is, it's really where we play uh, a series of strings with one single downstroke or one single upstroke. Now I'm just going to switch on my close-up cameras here so we can have a good look at this. If we're playing this shape here, you can see I'm doing a down pick, then I'm sweeping the next two strings with one single up pick. And if I was sweeping down, it would be one single down sweep, or down pick. Now, this is the difference between sweep picking and alternate picking. If we were alternate picking, we would be doing down up picking like this. It'd be like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So sweep with one single down pick. You don't want to do this kind of thing. See, I'm doing separate picking strokes. It wants to feel like one continuous movement. Now this is one of the things that can be kind of hard with sweeping when you start out. You feel like your pick is kind of falling and not very controlled. Well, we're going to look at some things very soon to help you deal with that. But that's the first thing. Make sure you're not doing a bunch of little individual picks. And make sure you're doing one sort of smooth uh, movement. Now you want to pick reasonably firmly but not really hard. Okay? Too hard and too soft. So it wants to be somewhere in the middle. Relaxation is the key here. Fairly relaxed, but still firm enough to get a good sort of fat sounding note. So your arm and your hand needs to be relaxed. You don't want to be doing any of this kind of thing. It's all coming from the wrist. Fingers nice and soft and relaxed. And so on, okay? Some people like to angle the pick slightly. I'm not really sure what I do. I think my pick stays fairly flat on to the string, but if you like to angle it, then that's fine. I'm sure you'll find that'll work for you. And now people look a lot at the right hand with sweep picking, and obviously that's an important part of it, but the left hand is also absolutely crucial. So let's, have a, let's zoom in now and have a look at what the left hand has to do. Now your left hand fingers have to roll off the notes as we play them. We don't want to hold down a fixed chord shape. 
or the notes are all going to ring together. So our left hand has to sort of adapt and come off the notes after they're played. We don't want to hold down the shape and let this hand do all the work. That's kind of important. So if I play this A minor shape, which I'm going to show you in a minute, I'm going to play it very slowly so you can see what I'm talking about. See, my fingers are sort of mobile. Play this shape. We're going to do all these in a minute. This shape. See, my fingers are moving. I'm not holding down like a locked chord shape and um, just playing that. I'm, I'm, my fingers are moving on and off the notes as I go. Um, and the only way you're going to get this happening is slow, accurate practice. We're going to be looking at some practice techniques in a moment. So there's just some pointers there about sweeping, okay, to get you started off. Now let's look at these shapes that I'm going to show you now. We're going to look at how to work on them, how to improve them, how to speed them up, all this kind of stuff. And then we're going to put them together into like a finished uh, piece or finished study exercise, which I'll take you through at the end of this lesson. So let's have a look now at the three shapes we're going to use and how I pick them. Now the first shape I'm going to use is an A minor arpeggio. And what I'm doing for this, I'm picking the 12th fret on the top E, using my little finger for that, and I'm pulling off to 8 on the top E. Then my second finger's playing 10 on the B string. My first finger's playing 9th on the G string. Then I go back up that shape again. So it's 10 on the B string, 8 on the top E, and 12 on the top E. All these are tabbed for you in the tab guide, and there's all the tips and everything in there. So you can click on the link under the video and get that if you want. Um, but in the meantime, here it is just on the video. So we're pulling 12 off to 8 and going across that A minor shape there. Now I'm picking the first note with a down pick and pulling off. Then I'm going up pick, up pick, down pick, down pick, up pick. So up pick, pull off, up, up, down, down, up, pull off, up, up, down, down, up, pull off, up, up, down, down. And that picking's really important because that's how we're going to play all these other shapes, okay? So that's our A minor shape. The next shape we're going to use in the exercise and in the lesson today is this G arpeggio shape. So let me show you that one. And what I'm doing for that is I'm picking 10 on the top E. I'll start that with a down pick. I'm pulling off to 7. I'm going up on the B string to 8. Up on the G string at 7. Down to the B string at 8 and down to the top E at 7. So up pick, pull off, up, up, down, down again. Up, up, down, down, up, pull off, up, up, down, down. The next shape I'm going to play is um, I'm going to show you this C major triad here. And what we're doing for this, I'm playing 12 on the top E, pulling off to 8 at the top E. So it's all using the same picking. Then I'm rolling my first finger onto the B string at the 8th. My second's playing the 9th fret on the G string. Then I go B at the 8th and top E at the 8th. And they're the three shapes we're going to use for the entire study. So there's only three of them. Here's that C chord again. 12 at the top E, pulling off to 8 on the top E, 8 on the B, 9 on the G, 8 on the B, 8 on the top E, and then loop it round. Here's a picking again. So up, pull off, up, up. Down, down. So there are three shapes there that we're going to use. Now let's have a look at how you can actually get that happening. And one of the things that I really like to do is break them up into two bits. I'm going to use this first A minor shape as an example for this. So this was this one here. And the way that I would practice that, or the way I did practice it, or still do when I want to improve it, is break it into two bits. Because so rather than looping it round like this, it's a bit much. We can break it into two bits and like separate out the mechanics of what we've actually got to do. So try this exercise. We're going to pick it up, pull off, up, up, and then just loop that round for a while. And that gets your up sweeps happening. Now the best thing to do is to use a metronome for this. I've got mine right here. And 
make sure that you're um, lining the first note up with a click. So like... And the last note too. My metronome's set at about 100 there. So what you can do with that then is master like the first part of the um, master the first part of the arpeggio, and then when you add the second part on as well, you know that's going to be easier. We're going to look at the second part in a moment. Let's do that little exercise with the next two shapes as well. I'll put my metronome on and take you through those. So then we're going to play this G one here. So this is ten seven on the top E, eight on the B, seven on the G. You could hear there I didn't. I didn't roll my fingers off like I was talking about earlier and I got this. That's what we've got to be careful of. So practice it really slowly and separate out those fingers. It's totally crucial that. Here we go again. Now if you've watched my speed speed building video in, in uh, episode two, you might want to put a gap in between. We talked about that. So you might go three, four. Really awesome practice technique doing this. Really helps you improve. And let's just finish off this section by doing the same to the C arpeggio. So th that was here. All with the gap. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Right, now the next thing to do then is to apply the same practice technique to the other half of the arpeggio, which is going up. So if we think of when we play that first arpeggio shape, we pick here, up, up, down, down. We need to look at that crossover point, the point at which the first bit and the second bit, bit meet so that we can practice the entire shape. And what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna start on the G string at the ninth fret with an up pick. Then we're going to pick the 10th fret on the B string, that's going to be a down pick. Then 8 on the top E with a down pick. And finally 12 on the top E with an up pick. So that's going to be like this. 3, 4. So this is great for practicing your down sweeps. And the first one, really cool for practicing your up sweeps. Practice it like this, you can gradually up the metro, maybe I'll have a go at that in a second for you. Um, here it is with the G shape. So this is seven on the G, eight on the B, seven, ten on the top B. And finally, here it is with the C shape. Put this on my left hand so you can see my fingers here. Okay, so what we've done there is we've practiced both halves of our triplet sweep. So we've practiced the first part of it, the second part of it, and now it's time to put it together and practice the, the entire shape. Now, I'll show you how to do this, but first of all, really nail those first two exercises before you move on to this one. I'll leave my metronome at the same speed. And here's, let's check this first one out. So this is the way you should practice it to start with, with a little gap, okay? Here we go. Three, four. Three, four. Check you're doing the picking right. Remember your left hand wants to roll. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Let's look at the G shape now. Three, four. This gap helps you just get it right more often. And the C shape. Okay, how can we speed it up? Well, the best thing to do, because I've had a the, you know, if you're just getting the hanger sweep picking, don't worry about the speed now. Focus on getting it clean, getting the notes clear and just getting used to the general feeling of it because that can take a little bit of practice. As I said earlier, sometimes it feels like our picks kind of 
falling through thin air a little bit to start with. So just work on those exercises first, that will help. But if you are one of these guys who said to me, how can I speed it up? Well, this is what you need to do. Gradually increase the speed of the metronome, keeping that gap. Now I'm gonna do this with the entire shape do it with the first two as well, so the first exercise and the second exercise. So let's say I'm going to bump my speed up to 120 here, so I've put the metronome up. So the first thing to do is practice the first two bits of the exercise, which was this. I'll use the A minor shape again. Three, four. Three, four. Gradually increase the speed, so I'm going to put it up there. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. And then come back the other way. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Then put it together. Little gap in between still. Notice how it's kind of hard to talk and do this at the same time. Notice how I'm getting this note on the click and that, that note on the click. So I get that. And if that's in place, then I know I'm in time. So they're on the click. So I'm pretty much in time. G shape. And the C shape. Okay, so what I do with the G shape again, I'll speed up my metronome. So I'm going to go up here now and I'll practice it in two halves. And the same with the C shape. Coming back the other way. So I'm starting with an up on nine and going across the shape now. And the C one. Put it all together. Now when you're comfortable and confident playing it once with a gap, you can work up to playing it twice. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. And the C shape. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. So obviously a bit of a crash course there. You know, I haven't got time to go through everyone going up in like two beat increments, but that's what you should do at home. Take it really slowly, just increase, increase the metronome gradually and it will pay off. It will pay off because if your sweet picking isn't clear and clean, it just can sound like a ton of noise. I'm sure you've heard people do that where you, where you don't really hear the notes. You just hear kind of a scratching sort of sound and we don't want that. So check you getting the notes really clear. I found once I started getting that, that other sweet picking things were actually sort of relatively easy once you got the basic technique happening. Again, on the three string sweeps, I found that really useful for getting that. So that's kind of the main fun focus of this lesson so far. Now, what I want to do now is just take you through a piece that I've put together, which uses all of them. So I'm going to play this for you really slow and break it down for you and show you how it goes. Let me play it for you, the whole thing, and then you'll see what I mean. So we've got... Okay, so I'll do it again. Okay, so that's the whole piece. So I'm going to take you through that very slow now. We're going to play the A minor triad twice. Then we're going to play the G triad twice. Then we're going to play the C triad twice. Now we're going to take that G shape and we're going to move it down two frets. So it's now pulling off eight to five on the top E, six on the B, five on the G. Now that's now an F triad, so we've got an F, F chord in there. So the first half of the piece goes like this, A minor, G, C, F. OK, 
okay, I'm really slow. So that's the first half of this piece. Now obviously work on each bar individually. So maybe you do this shape a little while. Do that a while. Then try the next shape. And then piece them together. And again. So you're gradually working through the piece and adding a little bit onto it each time rather than like leaping into the whole thing and just falling flat on your face which is really easy to do that when you you know when you're trying to start something it's really easy to rush so hold yourself back really get each section right join it up and the next time you do a sort of sweet picking piece you know you have the sort of basis of playing it well rather than like starting from scratch on a new piece let's look at the next bit of it what we're going to do here is play a b flat chord so it's the same shape as the c one up here but down two frets so we're picking 10 on the top e and pulling off to six rolling onto the b string at six seven on the g all the picking and everything exactly the same as before then we're going to go back to our f shape again back to b flat again back to G and then it goes round again let's have a good look at what the right hand's doing as we play that so we've got our B flat F B flat G play that section one more time for you so it starts with B flat F B flat G So here's the whole piece slow. I'll put my metronome on at 100 beats per minute, which is where we started. And here's the whole piece really slow. Two, three, four. Do it again. I messed, messed it up. I nearly went to the C for some reason. I've got to go to the G. Here it is again. <coughs> Two, three, four. A minor, G, C, F, B flat, F, B flat, G. So what you can then do is gradually increase the speed of your metronome and just push it a little bit. Let's try it at a few different tempos, <coughs> you know, just to demonstrate this. I'm going to up it to 120. So 132 actually, here we go. Again, focusing on the time. Okay, so there you've got a few tips about your sweep picking and a couple of exercises to practice and some ideas about how to break the shapes up and practice them. The most important thing, get them in time, get them clean. If it sounds like a mess and, and the notes aren't clear, just slow it way down, get the clarity, get the notes. Now, normally if the notes aren't clear, 
quite often it's this hand. It's this hand isn't kind of syncing up with the pick. And that just comes from practicing it really slow and checking that your left hand is moving off the strings. If you're getting, you know, you've got to slow it down because otherwise you're never really going to master the fundamentals of it and it's always going to sound a bit iffy, okay? So now, if you, I really hope you found this lesson useful. I hope it's answered all your questions. It's a big topic. I can't possibly address every single sweet picking issue in one lesson. It would be like three hours long. But I will do some more on this and we'll look at some sweeps going across more strings and some ways to incorporate uh, tapping and, and hammer-ons and whatnot into sweeps because it's kind of a really cool technique. You can play a lot of things that are really hard to play with just alternate picking. So it's well worth investigating. We will investigate it a little bit more in a future episode. So if you found this really useful, then please like it. Please leave a comment underneath. And also please subscribe to my channel and share it. Share it with your mates. You know, if you think anyone's gonna benefit from it, share it on Facebook, Twitter, just so it can get out there, other people can find it. And it can help them too if they wanna hand with their sweet picking. <coughs> Now, if you want the tab for this lesson, as normal, there's a tab book available with that exercise all transcribed, um, a breakdown of how to break the shapes up like we looked at, and all the tips that I talked about, about the left hand and the right hand. So that's all there. You can get that straight away by clicking the link underneath this video, and you'll get a copy of that tab book for this lesson emailed straight to your inbox. But other than that, that's pretty much it for today. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful. Remember to email me your questions at askjamesguitar at gmail.com, askjamesguitar at gmail.com, and I will try and get round to answering your question on one of this shows coming soon. But anyway, thanks again. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you coming and learning from me. Uh, keep those questions coming in, and I'll see you in episode five. So take care, and bye for now. Just want to give a shout out to a couple of my friends out there. This is for Avenged Awesomeness, one of my mates on Instagram. Uh, he has been playing for two years. His dream guitar is a Jackson JS32Q in blue. And the guitarist who is his most awesome favorite guitarist is Sinister Gates. So head over to Avenged Awesomeness's Instagram page and give him a bit of love there. Also got a great comment here from Zachy B on my Instagram page really wise words here be prepared to mess up but never stop trying I just love that I think it's such a cool philosophy for guitar players this idea that you just have to keep going you get better you just keep going keep putting one foot in front of the other you know don't worry if something sounds terrible to start with you have to go through that phase to make it sound good at the other side so it's some really good uh, wise words there from Zachy B so thanks Zachy B head over to his Instagram page and give him a bit of love there just to show that you also think what a great comment that is. And I'll catch you in the next episode of the Ask James Guitar Show. See you later.